We are live here for Caps and Cans on a Sunday afternoon in early parts of fall here. September 16, 2023, Caps against the Junior Canes who came in playing their first games of the season are the Canes. They went out and played the Crosstown Rivals and Caps Reston earlier today. So Reston is not what these guys are doing. They are hitting the gas right again after they just came off. Caps had a tough weekend last weekend of hard fought games out in the Midwest. Michigan who checked out the, the games that, that are still up on the team site for that. Was a very respectable 2 1 and 1 record against some tough competition and looking to get their feet back on them here after two days of practice this week. The walking wounded are coming back together. It's going to be interesting to see. This team has not had a full confidence yet this season. It'll be a couple more weeks before we see everybody together. But looking forward to seeing what this team can do as the season The important thing is they have been able to overcome early season adversity. Once again, as mentioned, the Caps are 6 1 and 1 on the season. 4 0 in EJ play. 2 1 1 in tournament play. But the most important game is the one where you're sitting on the bench and looking across the way and seeing the other guys. Looks like Nichols number 32 is going to get the nod. We'll see if that ends up in the case. And I haven't looked down too far on the crystal ball to see who's going to get the nod.
caps, 15 minutes on the clock. Three 15 minute periods here. So bear with me if uh, Zerbiblia is going to take the opening face off, and Brennan Murray is opposite 74. We take the face off for the caps, and here we go. And in fact, it was number 32 National in the net down at this end. Face off won by the caps, and it's Gunnar Lauder. Gunnar Lauder looking for a lane. Trying to find something. Pass it back to D, stepping up and going to neutral zone. And there's 24. Hard on the four check, getting louder together, making things very difficult for the Kings. I trying to move things out. Number 19 gets one through neutral to Germain, and one of the caps is going to go on a delayed penalty here. Look like a trip at the blue line back here, and that's not how you want to start 20 seconds into the contact. Oh boy, too many men! Boy, they got the goalie off, but two guys jumped on for him. Didn't affect, impact the play at all, so. No harm, no foul, apparently. And with just a uh, minute. So now we're going to test their penalty killing capability. 26, uh, Maloney going to take the draw here to the side of his goaltender. Chips it over the sideboard, so I'm able to do much with that as the Canes get one towards the net, but turned away into the corner. Caps moving it away. Keeping things to the outside is number... Eight Stevens, that's Cameron Stevens. Oh boy, that one that was a little bit of a testy shot there coming in on net. Caps unable to get the quick clear. Maloney working on the right hand side. I'm sorry, that wasn't Maloney, that was McGraw working on the side. Caps bumping things around and getting the clear finally. Nope, still did not, and it goes down through the front of the net area. Big Murph's going to send that one around. Quick chip up the boards. Are they going to get it? Nope, still not getting it. So that's three or four opportunities. And this one was called offside by the official who's standing right on the blue line. We'll have to take his word for it. But as 74 Murray sits for another minute 18, the Caps had three or four opportunities to get the clear and did not, losing it within feet of the blue line. So that's something you're going to want to look for as the season progresses. And the game, of course, is... Are they focused on a breakout of the zone? And even if it's a chip and chase, whatever that looks like, it's so much more important on the penalty kill. There's Shannon Force blows one out of the off the walls there, and he's off to the races. With number five, Tim, and Tim using the speed and getting roughed up a little bit down here in the corner. Chabot takes him for Carolina. Nice work by the cops, burning a couple of seconds off in the offensive zone there as uh, 38. Hudson Spencer was giving chase. It's back up to the point. Carolina's really not set up a whole lot of anything. The Caps had a hard time getting the clears. And Shannon, again, off the glass and out into neutral. As now, look at this opportunity by Kim. The puck kept rolling on him. And he's going to get the favorable call on what looks like a hook by Chabot, 23. Official making the designation on the hooking call. So Caps turn a shorthanded situation into a mini breakaway and the speed of Kim drawing the hooking call against Chabot. So with 31 seconds remaining on their own penalty kill, Caps are now the beneficiaries of a two minute power play. So it'll be four on four for 31 seconds and the Caps will actually have a minute 29. One back. Had a fantastic turn, a very patient player. Sends that one off of a skate in front, Kohler. Kohler gets it, wheels, deals, tries to get it back down to Fletcher Black. Fletcher Black taking that out of the corner. Four man. Scrum here in the corner. Fletcher Black on the handle runs into the official. And Pye's got a bunch of wheels. He gets a, a beautiful pass up into neutral. Four on four action here. Plenty of ice out there. And this one looked like it was a hand pass. Might have been offside. 
whatever the transgression was against the cat the canes he's going to just be a face off outside of the zone on an offside my apologies if this is a little herky jerky again the camera angles here are a little bit tough to deal with Runs off to the side as the Canes come up with it. Kessel looking for the pass, but as D-May skates it across, does Pye, gets it back to Kessel. Kessel busts up the right-hand side, Kohler and go. And now the Caps on the abbreviated power play, minute and 20 and change to go here on the power play. Mucking things up on the boards are the Canes, and so back in the neutral zone is Pye. Pye looks for the quick pass across, and Caps would be in good position on that one. A little slow to get to that one was Lund back. So... Hudson Spencer has to chase it down below his net minor, and it comes back up, and now the long stretch pass to Fletcher Black. It rolled on him at the last second. Bounce up over his stick, so he's going to go on the four check. Fletcher Black on Kessel. Can we help from Ballard? But High gets the chip and gets it out momentarily. Caps back on side. 48 seconds to go here in this power play opportunity for the Caps, and Kohler stepping in. Creating a little time and space for Fletcher Black, and he's going to outskate number two, Thomas. Cooper Thomas gets one out front. It was a nifty save there as it was turned away by Nashholz, and here's Aviglia. Oh, stepped on the stick of Kohler, and the officials said nothing to see here. And if I'm the Canes, I'm probably a little incest. That was one of those ones that was an unfortunate, but probably the right call to make would have been the trip as he stepped on the Caps player's stick. Either way, Kim's got him behind his own net, tries to chip it out, doesn't go very far quick and a rare shot on net there Kim tries to get it up and out does and caps Schmidt plays it off the sideboards gets a bad bounce as number eight Stevens and that's Cameron Stevens sends one in on net from long range and so things are settled down here caps and Kane 0 0 12 50 remaining here in the first couple of Minutes in, we've had a penalty on both sides and uh, some end-to-end -end action, and both goaltenders have had to make a, a stop or two. Spencer Schmidt taking the centering duties down there to the right of his net miner and wins it, gets it back, and that's what we're going to click up and out and through a couple of guys, but Spencer Schmidt ends up getting it himself. And Aaron passed there as Murphy was skating through the center. They didn't quite connect on that one. And good physical play by Shannon Force, absolutely blasted. Uh, it looked like number 28 is Zerviglia. I'm not sure that one. Maybe it was 89. It doesn't matter. The guy was down for a bit. And of course, the only guy here in the corner is one of Stevens' boys, McGraw. Nice work getting it out of the corner. Sheeney Force digging in. Comes up with it. Oh, trying to get the point pass. And good job by. Uh, it wasn't Kessel. It might have been, been Kessel. No, it was Kuzis breaking that one up. Either way, good physical play over in front of the Canes bench now. A couple guys going back and forth. And six-man scrum over there. Caps get the better of it as it goes towards their net miner turned away now by Castellucci. Sorry, I didn't uh, pick up who the goaltender was earlier on, but boy, was he fantastic. The one-man gang, he did all the minutes between the pipes for the Caps, and here's Kohler. He's got a couple of his buddies, and I don't know how that one stayed on side. Tim looked like he was off by about two feet. But the officials felt otherwise. Kim pass up to the point. Oh, it just barely gets by. Gip shot down in and netminder. Nashold's flash in the glove. I am all over the place with this camera. So I'm going to try to do I don't, I don't. I don't have it on here. So there's Christian Kim, number five, <laughs> skating up on the left-hand side there. It looks like it was uh, Cameron Stevens and hauled down by Jordan Kohler. No, oh, called on the dive. That looks like it was a dive call against the Canes player. And there's a shot from long range and goes in front and turned away by 23 Chabot. And the call by the, the official is incensed. I'll call him on oh, one holding a stick and one trip. So all that was because of it's five on three is what it should be here. What was going on there? Unless he evened it up four on four. Two. Black 
Jersey Canes are sitting down with 11 on three to go. Five on three for the Caps. What an opportunity. Uh, clock just went to zero. That's not helpful. I think it was 11 3, right? So officials are sorting things out. 1049, 1103 must have been when I saw something different going on. Either way, numbers are important. And with five on three advantage, with two players down, that's 18 Kaminsky and uh, 23 Patrick Stevens. Shot off oh, Kim, Kim was lined up with a one time in there. Beautiful pass right into his wheelhouse there. Oh, another opportunity there, and Kim just does not want to pull the trigger. Shot from long range, and he turned away by Nash holds as he slumped up. Well, whether that was going in or not, he said, I'm kicking this net out of here. This would have been the first that did pull the trigger. This is on the draw here. Gets it over Fletcher Black. Good, quick backhand pass up to the point. Back to Black. Black passes across. He's got Lauder. Lauder with a quick release. Looks for the pass down low. Bishop on the handle. And there it is on Kim sticking. Kim had the opportunity. Lauder there. Kim, Lauder, both of them. Lauder cleaned out on the play. Back towards the goaltender. Nationals never saw it, though, as Pye comes up with it. Try to get it through traffic. And now the Caps have the opportunity. Oh, boy. But for a good pass. They were in three on one there. And there's the click clear by Silvestri, and that one's gonna die. So with a minute 13 to go on this five on three, Caps had a little bit of excitement there. They had a couple of great shooting opportunities where nobody pulled the trigger. There's Kim decides he wants to skate it through. Lauder's got it, he's trying to turn things around. Sends one towards the net, bounce off the skating front. Shot well up over the net. That looked like my approach shots the other day. My pitch and wedge, by the time I was done with it, I was chipping back from further than where I started. That thing was about three feet over the net and went the length of the ice. Louder trying to skate through Zerviglia. Uh, keep uh, saying this wrong, I'm sorry. Zerviglia, and there's Lundback. Lundback in the blue line drops it off. Protecting the puck well. That's skating the defender there. Two Thomas was Brennan Murray. And Zerberblia unable to get through the defense, but Rag and Timeoff is now suddenly after the full two minute five on three. Caps unable to do anything thus far. 12 seconds and now 10. And there's a shot and off the post. That was the inside of the post, dude. Nash will flash the glove up, but couldn't get it. This one's going to be no icing as it went off of a Caps player. I don't know how that's icing. It certainly looked like it went off of a Caps player's stick. But either way, this power play is over, 8.49 to go here in the first 0-0 score. Caps were the beneficiaries of a full two-minute five-on-three and could not do anything with it. Good hit pose, move the puck around a little bit. Spencer Schmidt. Draw goes down low. Battle down in the corner, Shane Force had to come up with a Stevens. Sends it to the far blue line. Caps have it quickly, and they're back on the offense. And it's forced. Force up to try to get the pass back. And did get it down and bounced off of his pants. It looked like down over Schmidt. Schmidt back to first. Forcing behind the net. Unable to handle that roller. Goes all the way up, and Murphy vacates the blue line. This one goes all the way through everybody. Caps definitely, uh, from, what, from what I'm seeing from the Canes, Caps, Caps should be getting all over them here. This, this is not anywhere near the competition the Caps have seen early in the season. And uh, unfortunate contact Geyer there looked like he got the worst of two guys coming in at the same time. Grabbing his head, you never want to see that. And this one's going out of the zone as Heller won able to play. It looked like he kept it on the blue line, but the official down low felt it was out. And boy, you don't want to see that. It looked like Geyer grabbing his head there after two guys came in at the same time, giving the Malachi crunch. see that at any point ever. 8.01 to go here in the scoreless first, Caps and Canes. Buckos 
Back to the blue line into the defensive zone for the Caps. Quick up and out. Maloney unable to handle the chips it forward and forward. Forward trying to one-hand it up the boards. Kessel and his mates are working hard, but Caps seem to keep coming up with it. They've got plenty of skills. Caps seem to have a team that is pretty big. The Caps play a pretty good physical game as well. Shot and Castellucci, and he falls down on that one as he gets a lot of traffic and introductions down there in the blue crease. Hope the cooler heads prevail and they'll walk away with 7.33 remaining here in this first period. Remember, uh, cops have a game tomorrow morning as well, 8 a.m. against the Delaware something or others. I don't know what they are. Wilmington Nighthawks. That sounds about right. Wilmington Nighthawks tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time. But for now, cops have a face-off winning behind their own net and it goes up and around, not out though. Caps unable to find that one on the half boards. So now it's Murray. Murray wraps it up and around. Gunner Louder over skates that one, and so Kane's going to work. Officials have been a little bit busy on the penalty calls in the early going here. Caps have sat once, Kane's three times. I think this net, net off was the call there. Both nets have come off at least twice. Faceoff is outside of the zone as the officials have determined that the Kings are the ones who push that off. These two cameras here. Caps trying to get the clear, and they do, and it's Gunnar Louder. He's one on one if he hits the gas here. He tries to chip it to himself, and he does. Good shot. Oh, beautiful right. Left pad saved there by. Nash holds, got a louder quick release. Very tricky shot he laid out there. Misty little touch pass there as well. Go over to Murray. Murray looking for a lane, shoots it high off the chest of Nash holds. Nash holds standing tall, deep in his net. He's a big goaltender, he stays deep in his net. Thus far, equal to the task. Wong, I see you're in Austria. Put some shrimps on the bobby. Enjoy that good talk, as it were. This off win back by the Caps, or I'm sorry, by, by the uh, Kings. As Stevens able to get it up, but not out. Fletcher Black over skating came up with it one more time and then lost it. Bishop couldn't settle things down as the Kings get through a little bit deeper into the zone there, but not able to set anything up still. And Coburn, Heath Coburn getting some work out of the corner there. And Castellucci, great rebound control as always, sending it right where he wanted it. And then this one's up and out to Bishop. Bishop behind the back to Black. Black's going to hold off as one of Stevens' boys comes up and Coos is unable to handle. So now it's gaps at neutral. Oof. Awkward hit there, like a run back. No worse for wear. So he's just a little off balance with 5.58 remaining here in the first period. Caps and Canes, 0-0 zero, zero is the score. Falling down next to Shannon Force was one of the Canes players. Guys tend to do that. A little chatter going on there. Oh, yeah. Talking about their favorite steak recipes. Pass up to McGraw and then to neutral. It's Spencer Schmidt unable to handle, waving at us from the Caps defenders, but suddenly it's McGraw in looking to see who's going to make work the ball good. Chipped nicely by Jermon all the way across. Schmidt digging out of the corner. Oh, by himself gets it to the front. A couple of guys, McGraw and Forrest, working in front of that blue paint there. Stevens gets it up through. Geyer, thankfully, nice to see him back. He takes an old shot there as Lundback is able to get it back to his D partner. And now Spencer Schmidt on the floor check. Back up along the sideboard. It's McGraw, McGraw got Forrest Pitt. Camping out in front, but the Caps are going to regroup in neutral. Back all the way over D to D play there as number 62 Soler plays it through neutral. Goes through a couple of guys. Kohler unable to handle it, and now it is McGraw. McGraw digging right to left across the blue line. Finds a lane. Next one. Nifty little shot. Kohler getting a second shot and third shot by Tim. 
And with all that traffic down there, somehow, a uh, little fracas going on in front. Walk away cooler heads here. But Nash holds the coolest head of all, able to find that rolling puck and settle things down for his mates. And it looks like they're going to take one and one. That's the right thing for the official, settle things down a little bit. As number 28, uh, Zverblia, number 8, Kohler, are both going to settle, sit down and think about their mutual transgressions there with 4.55 or 6.56 to go here in the first and third. So five on five, no manpower after that. Good job again by Nashville. It's finding that in traffic. Three caps had opportunities at that one. The officials are explaining it's uh, that both of them had head contact, so they're both two and tens. So they're gone for 12 minutes each, and that really hurts the caps. Good number eight, Kohler, playing, playing a lot of center minutes. Spencer Schmid is going to go sit for the two portion of that. So once again, uh, Zverbia and Kohler will be not available to their respective clubs for a while as they each got head contact penalties. This was a good job by the officials settling things down. We're only 10 minutes into the game. Settling things down and, and uh, uh, establishing a line. Don't cross this line. And it was very fair and even up for both teams there. Faceoff's going to be the right of Nationals momentarily, just making sure they've got everything sorted out on the timekeeper side of things. And so now Schmid and Guy are both coming back to their respective benches. Because it's not a manpower penalty, you didn't have to put a guy over there that makes a ton of sense. So each of the other guys have to sit for two times. That makes a lot of sense. So two on two happening with Kim following up and putting the back pressure on, coming up with the puck, and this one was offside. So it hasn't been a ton of flow to this game. A lot of chipping the puck around here and there in all three zones by both clubs. A handful of icings and offsides. Always haven't seen a whole lot of shots. A couple of testers on both ends. But both teams really sort of figuring things out. Caps have been off the ice game play since last weekend. This is the first weekend of play for this Carolina team, so they're really trying to figure out their game legs as well. Caps better not let them hang around too long, though. That's when bad things happen. Lifty work by Kim there, making Pai rethink his direction, but Pai, he's shown several times in this game good, hard, crisp passes up to his teammates. That one started the breakout, but the Caps had a lot of players back. One thing you've seen in the early goings this season, Caps tend to really swarm and come in waves. They think swarming in waves on the defensive side. Things going around. Back up trying to get down on Maloney. Maloney out there, but it's going to be clean. Slowing things down. And up there, shot from long range, turned away by the defensive high. Louder, quick turn in the deflection by Maloney. Spencer, Hudson Spencer's got it down low. Here. Shot up front. And Louder, great job by the defense. Handling louder, who's a bull in a giant shot down there, and Nashold's helping things hold as well, pushing and shoving to make his case with 347 remaining in the first scoreless period. And that's their count percentage by the NCI. Here's where we are. First home action for Caps this year. Played four games up in, in Philadelphia, uh, this was University of Delaware, and then they played four games over in. Grand Rapids, Michigan. So first home action, and this is, uh, for lack of a better term, a friendly Rosie with a nice hit on the sideboard shot. Range point shot of number 38, Hudson Spencer. And it's Fletcher Black staying down from the net. Rosie chatting it up a little bit. A couple of chuckles, but you gotta stay out of the box on that stuff. Don't get the official's attention. Murray taking the face off, gets caught in the official skate. Fletcher Black helping him out. That's so important for your centers if they want to win face offs, is get help from your wings. Number 11, Jay Staples, unable to do much of it with it, as that one ended up going offside, or it was a hand pass. I didn't see what the final call was. Either way, it's outside of the zone there. 319, 318 to go here in the first period. Faceoff comes back to center, turned away by the big right pad of Casalucci. 
chipped up but not out by the Caps on second effort. It does go out, and there's Hudson Spencer skating across the blue line, getting it down to Fletcher Black. It's got a oh, nifty pass up front. Rosie on the other time that one. Timing wasn't quite there. So back up to Black. Black coming through neutral, gets over Rosie on the far side. Stepping through a couple players. One player too many takes a hit for his troubles. It's Brennan Murray. Thought that was Rosie there as well. There's Murray, and this one taken away by the big power of Nashville. Nashville definitely owns his crease. Going down low, can't handle that one. There's a hit by Rosie, and it's back up through neutral. His one back on able to handle it, but his defense partner was there in the form of number 98, Big Murph. Up around everybody, run back. Couldn't think it all the way through, and why is as a play, Rosie was going to play with a high stick and decided not to. And nifty passing play by the Canes and an even better save as it went east to west, back to east. And Castellucci, as he's done the last five games, was just stellar tracking that play all the way through. And oh, trying to dance through. One guy too many is Bishop on his own. Capture changing in behind the play. Couldn't get a shot off. So with under two minutes to go, it's now McGraw. He chips on off the boards. It's up out in the neutral. Good pressure by Louder to make turnover a pull at center ice. And now Cap's going to work on the four check here. Bishop gets it back at the Louder. Goes off to the Bishop, but nobody down deep here. McGraw and Louder looking at the Thomas tries to get up and now Bishop keeps it in. And it's Louder worked over by two canes. He takes the hit, but got the pass off over to Bishop there. And there's going to be a penalty called on the charge over the rough. So 117, roughing was the call. I came in from long range and just absolutely played nothing but body on that last hit on Louder. So the Kings have got to be feeling like, you know, they're getting home job a little bit by the officiating here. But quite clearly, both teams have come to play physical. And the officials established the line early on. So 117 to go, Caps two minute power play here as 26 Silvestri. Sam Silvestri is going to sip a little bit louder with a quick chip. And Nashville, it's a good win on the face off again by the Caps. Gives them possession right away. And Shaney Force coming in, talking with his old mate louder. They've played together since they're in, at different stages, at least, of their career since they were about seven or eight years old. Spencer Smith sees it go towards the defense. Oh, goodness gracious is what number 57 Ryan Gipp just yelled out as that thing got him right on the inside of the ankle. Okay. You heard it from here. You knew it hurt. And look at Schmidt trying to find Forrest. Forrest driving the net. Schmidt gets a shot off under a minute to go. You see the Caps change up their line here. You think five new guys, or at least a couple. Up, oh, Louder's out. And the draw is on. So can stick with the same bunch. Pass goes up, but not out. Aw, Kim banned on that one. He tried to get it down to McGraw in the half boards. Fortunately for the Caps, the uh, pass went for an icing against the Canes. So 48.1. Caps still have 31, a uh, minute 31 rather, on this power play opportunity. Got to win this faceoff is the important part. Shanny Force, the lefty. Digs in, wins it towards McGraw. McGraw's got it, chips it to the boards for himself, and he's got out front. Schmidt can't handle that one as it goes through a couple of different guys. And McGraw and Schmidt unable to get on the right side of that one. He's kept in at the point, though. Shandy Force steps in. He's been a defenseman a lot of times in his career, knows how to play that point. And it's down to Schmidt. Schmidt, nifty play down below, gets it to McGraw. McGraw, a little slow getting to it. He made the right play. There's a nice pass up to the point. Got some long range shot, goes to the glove of Nashville. It's no white jerseys in front. So with 18.7 to go in the period, going to get a whole new set of tires on this rig. Cops have a minute two remaining on this power play, but they're going to get some fresh dudes out there and hopefully get another couple more scoring chances. I feel like there have been some more opportunities for both clubs and they've really taken advantage of the Caps have certainly had the better play for the long stretches. And now it's Bouncer just went right through Solaire. So he's got to chase it down with seven seconds and five. Oh boy, he just took an awkward hit. And oh boy, two seconds and one. Thankfully, oh goodness. 0.56 seconds to go here. 0.6, it looks like. Um, Caps have a face off. It's like 
every, everything kind of went wrong on that play there. So while they should have just walked off, they uh, end up having to take one more face off to the left of their netminder, Castellucci. The face off went to the point, no shot by the Canes, and there's that. So we'll sit around for a couple minute intermission here. Zero. A lot of penalties called in that first period. Most of them to the been to the benefit for the Caps. Castellucci hasn't made to make a ton, hasn't had to make a ton of saves, but definitely was tested a couple of times. Getting a little bit more action at the far end was number 32. Oh, and Nationals. Caps on the power play still after intermission. 41 seconds remaining in this power play opportunity. And the Kings win the face off. 40 seconds now. Getting down. 17 minute period here. It's one back. One back over to Rosie. Rosie down to one back. Going louder. Shifts it around. It's going to be picked up by Rosie. Rosie digging around. There's a pass off to far point. So later plays it off the skate. Has to chip it down the corner. Got to get these passes down flat on the ice for each other here. There it is, back up to Rosie. Rosie to the point. Solaire, Solaire from long range. A little bit of traffic in front. Still not enough. You see more white jerseys on that slot area. And this one is kept in and it is not. And so now, far play is over. 16 and change to go here in the second period. Caps and Kane 0-0. Zero, zero. Oh boy. Going to get called on the interference as one of the cops players. And here's a bouncer out front, and the cops are going to get the touch. <laughs> and Murray is incensed. Can't, you can't lose your head. Get an extra, extra time to sit down and think about it. I think that one for a little bit, and that'll be that. Either way, Caps now have the opportunity. Brandon Murray sitting for two minutes to test out the, on the kill yet again. Shannon Force taking the face off here to the right of Castellucci. Kim getting a lot of point time in this situation. Good shot by one of the Canes players. Shannon gets it off the boards. Off. Good balls for the Canes there as it went right to the shins of one of their players and Shannon first cleared him out and Caps have a hard time clearing. That's Luch is solid. And there's Kim. Kim off the boards. Good touch play out there. It's number eight Cameron Stevens picks it up. Trying to find his way through neutrals. Gaps were overlooking things, but the 15-21 to go here in the second period. 
Caps bogged down the neutral zone. And now one man Bam trying to skate all the way through everybody, but Caps pushing to the outside. Up to the first place of Tyre Thomas trying to play that front, but Murphy had his back. And speaking of back, there's one back and can't quite get the clear yet. Again, out front, the physical play at the blue line, and it's Murphy. Murphy keeping things to the outside. Playing off one of the defense players, and one back. One back chips it up and around. It's going to be 10. Finally gets a good roller on the way out of the zone. This one goes in. Nope, does not go off the playing surface. As the Caps have in front of the Canes bench, and boy, they get misaligned on that one. And this is going to be a shot in long range, and Casalucci finds it ultimately. 47 Cusis. Get a little bit of snow to Casalucci, but not enough to get too much attention from the Caps players. Caps really need to manage your own business and get some clears. They've had too many opportunities in this game to get clears that both at, at, at their own blue line and have not been able to get it out cleanly. Not just clears, but, but breakouts. But the first part of that is focusing on attaining a clear. Casalucci said that's enough of that. That one he had his. That was a dangerous play by Casalucci in my non goaltending coach opinion. Is in that. Didn't have a stick down on the ice. That's something that I've seen burn goalies in the past. But, oh boy, he was off to the races and just missed it. He would have been gone. It would have been fun to watch. Heller's waving at it, getting things to the outside. McGraw with a fantastic play there and skating stick, and something's going on down here low. And the officials. One of the players had his helmet unbuckled. Or the two two players had their helmets locked together. The officials have done a phenomenal job, whatever has gone on in this game, of communicating to the players and the benches. Here's what's been going on. So agree or disagree with any of the calls. The officials have done a great job of explaining what's going on which keeps things in, in much more of a, a, a calm mode for everybody. Really pushing things to the outside, ends up picking up the and chipping it up and out, but that's gonna go for an icing, a little bit of mustard on that one. So there'll be five seconds remaining on the Murray penalty, 14.01 to go here in the scoreless second now. Jackson Davis, here on Saturday, September 16th. Some people may have heard this my 22nd anniversary with the lovely Ann. A lot of people have sent me congratulations and have sent condolences to her. That's the right order of things. Rosello wins the face off back, and they do get the clear, and this is waved off. No icing, and Gunnar Lauder goes to work on the forecheck as Murray comes up and out. Canes are going to settle up in behind their net down here. Nash holds and see if they can. Settle things down into a control break. Not able to get the control break. Caps keep it in. Up oh, did not keep it in. Offside was the call by the official. Both of these officials, again, like or dislike their calls, are very decisive and they seem to be very much in sync with each other. You, you gotta like that in a crew out there. Lauder playing the physical game on the far boards in front of the team's bench. This man is 74 Murray taking over to Hudson Spencer backhand so he does not get the roll. He's going to the worst of that. And it's now Rosella. Can't handle him going through his legs. Has one back. Once again, he and Spencer and quick one up to Lauder. Lauder tries to chip it off the boards. That's not gonna go over. Oh, got the favorable bounce. And it's Rosie off to the races, and he's got Murray in tow, but great defensive work there. Two players getting back in the quick shot by Louder, turned away by the low right pad of Nash holds. And there's a shot from long range. Hudson Spencer off the blocker you heard. And so with 12.51 remaining in the second in the scoreless tie, you see a face off to the left of Nash holds of Carolina. Fletcher Black stepping in to take a face. Obviously, they're in the early parts of the season. Coaching staff working different players through different roles. Uh, and, oh boy, you got a two 
one one developing in a hurry. And there's a shot in the over the shoulder. I don't think there was anything to shoot at there, though, as Casalucci well out on his angle. Looks like he didn't give a, a, a ball. Oh, nifty pad save there by the goaltender. Is, is that Fletcher Black? Fletcher Black has scored an awful lot of breakaway goals in his life. Oh, boy, he looks like he's limping. He, he, he's pulling up lame. He's, he's got something on his left knee. That does not look good. He went off and jumped off the bench, or jumped off the ice on the bench, and not looking like he's in full repair right now. That's a guy who's got a lot of great locker room presence, a lot of great effort in there. Now he's somebody for the Carolinas going off. Oh, he's gone for the game. 28 on the slash, so that's what it was. I thought he just pulled something on his skating, but apparently he got I might have misread that situation. So that's Serviblia. He's, he's going for some equipment repairs or something. But uh, it doesn't matter. Caps have to do something on this power play. They've gotten so many in this game. Got to do something here. Moving it around a little bit now, keeping it to the outside. Got it to the point for a shot. Got down low. There's no traffic whatsoever. There's nobody within 15, 20 feet of that goaltender. Now, finally, you got number 13 down there, Bishop. You two guys in the low slot. Bishop moves out of the way. The other player moved out of the way. There's 22, Rosie. And now the Canes get the clear, but that one went up and out of play. That hit something. That hit something up high. Officials are calling a rough, it looks like, on Bishop. So with 118 on the power play, Caps are now going to go four on four, and then ultimately off. Got about 42 seconds of power play against Bishop. I didn't see the actual play. A lot of chatting going on out here. Both teams are pretty engaged in this contest for sure. Looks like Force and Rosie are out there together. So we're now who's going to do what? Well. Rosie's going to take the draw. Goes the way of Carolina. Carolina shot from long range. Casalucci couldn't handle the rebound. But Johnny on the spot with Solaire. Solaire going the other way. Boy, skating with his, up, his head up nicely. And what a beautiful drop pass to Lundback. Lundback getting the business from a player. And oh boy, Caps yet again unable to get the clear. So they're playing Sebastian off the puck. It's now one, one back. One back reverse and thanks. Nifty pass up, but shin high. So there comes up with it though and kept in by the Caps. Rosello, Roselli backhand. Rosello can't quite pull the, the line on that one to hold it towards the net. It was a little bit wide. Shandy Force back in defensive position as Silvestri stops at the blue line. Waiting for Pi to come back. Pi was all the way down the blue paint there. And, oh, nifty split of the defense there, driving a net hard. It's number 19, Pi. Give him a lot of credit. That's a tough play for any player. Put your head down and just go to the net like that. And, you know, Caps, you almost wanted to see him make him pay for that a little bit more. But either way, no harm, no foul. 20 seconds remaining on his four-on-four -four action. 10.40 to go here in this second period. Scoreless tie, Caps and Canes. BC 68, Gunnar Louder taking the face off here. Heller to his left. A couple of his mates to the right, including Kohler, who's now back in action. And Murph, Murph's got it. Chips around behind us, Heller. Heller outlasting the hook. Big hook of Staples. That's a hook any day of the week, but officials got to be tired of Those whistles are worn out. That one's going to stay in. Caps get it down low in the form of Heller chipping it in, and Murphy's going to go to work on the four check at 98 on 89. All the way in behind the net of Nash holds as 30 seconds remain on the Caps penalty kill now. And Murph chips away a beautiful timing on that one, get it away, but... Kane stepped into it and nifty individual move. Staple puts it top. Oh, Jeez. Beating that to his own. You're going to let a guy skate through. Everybody knows that. He's going to get an opportunity. So 
this team that has been thoroughly outplayed, in my opinion, the Canes, have stuck around. And with 19 seconds remaining on that power play, they were able to bury one. 957 to go here in the second. Uh, I don't think this game should even be close. Cap should be up five to one, maybe four nothing. Based on capabilities of the teams, but Caps have not executed. Caps are clearly the better team. They've not executed. This is back to Spencer at his own blue line. Trying to skate it up and through, and he's going to give chase along with Kohler. Kohler's got it, takes it off the end boards there. Coming up with it for a moment is Bishop, gets it over to Kohler. Kohler and Bishop working down there, gets it in behind Fletcher Black. Good to see him skating. Boy, he came up tender on that play earlier. Must have been just one of those nasty whack plays, not a, not a pull or anything. That's good news. Caps player, I'm not sure if it was... Oh, boy, whoever's going to go sit. Must have been Bishop again. Bishop on interference. It looked like it was a good timing play, but the officials saw it differently. So Caps are now going to go back to the penalty kill. 9-18 to go here in the second period. This is an important game. It's a really play out there. It's a team that's up here, they're, they're, you can see that the Kings are gelling in sort of the this season. They're excited to be up here. Non-league game. You've got to get up for these games and you've got to execute. Getting a shot across the back because he didn't put himself in great position there, but he did get it up out as Schmidt goes to work on the four check. 9.07 to go here in the period. Minute 45-ish on the penalty kill for the pass. Once again, trying to dance through the middle. Pass easy to win that down. He was well wide to Paige. Schmidt, nifty pass across. He felt where the pressure was, got it all the way across. Tim dancing around, but... I don't know. Caps have it now back at their own blue line and one back, one back, chipping up and through. Tim unable to drop anything on that. Murphy. Murphy comes across the red line, gets the blue line. Uses his body, protects it, skates all the way down low, goes on the four check himself. Good physical play down there as he takes up, I think it was up 47 Coos, it's not 100% sure. But either way, Murphy got the better of it in that good position and ragging time off this penalty kill as Bishop sits for one more minute. And that one went into the player's bench for the Canes as it hit the netminder who's on the iPad over there. Canes a little frustrated with the turn of events there. But 57 seconds remaining on Caps penalty kill. 8 14 to go here in the second half. Down 1 0 on that second period power play goal. Shane Force wins a face off, gets it over to his boy Hudson Spencer, who summarily throws it up and out of play. Of course, another Spencer and Maloney out there. Good, good, really good body position by some of the Caps, or the Canes players rather, taking away skating lanes. The Caps were trying to put pressure on, and without interfering, Canes did a good job of taking away lanes. Of course, with a nifty little through the legs, chip up the ice there. That will not go for icing, so they're able to get the clear, get it down in the offensive zone, go to work on a passive 2 2 four check here. We'll send one man in slightly. Let's see what the Canes are trying to do and take away lanes. 19 seconds to go on the penalty kill. Hudson Spencer watching things, pushing it to the outside. Getting a little help from Heller on the near side. Good handoff. There. Shannon Force got his stick thrown away from him by one of the Canes players. No interference call there. And Heller, great job getting the clear as it helps his teammate get his stick back and helps his other teammate come out of the penalty box. So they killed that one off. And it's now Bishop and now Force. Force crosses his own blue line, takes a little whack across the back for his troubles, and he's going to go hard on the four check against number 26 of Estre. They tangled up a little bit as the puck goes out of play. So 7-0-1 remaining here in the second period. Caps down 1-0 to the visiting Canes in this non-league matchup. Friendly Saturday game. Caps, remember, are playing the Wellington Nighthawks tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern time.
had the opportunity to chat with a couple of folks from this Carolina club out in the parking lot before the game. And this is a 100% 07 club. And that's a wraparound and great goaltending there by Nashold's keeping the puck up and out of his net. Run back in great position there, pushing things off and no offsides there. So there, puts the last touches on the push of Kusis, unable to get the scoring chance. Oh, and then plays it right to the defender at the point. Cops lucky that that shot didn't get through. And somebody in front of Coburn takes a hit from Murray. Louder looking for the clear and gets it to Rosella. And he's off to the race. He's gonna win this one. Oh, puck rolled on just a little bit, but boy, he had beaten both defenders back. Nifty a little behind the, or through the legs pass there by 74. Murray trying to hit louder in front. Banged up on a couple of things, and it is now Soler and Lundback on the defensive side of things. Lundback making the quick reversal at his own blue line, gets it up to Gunnar Louder, and that's going to go into the big catching glove of Nash Holds, who has looked more and more comfortable as the game has progressed, 5.59 remaining here in the second. I am the... Face off to the left of the netminder, Nash holds. It kind of bounces around a little bit and keeping it in almost. It got over the outstretched hand of Murphy, and if it went over his hand, that's about 19 and a half feet up in the air. Big Murphy unable to grab that one out of the air, and Bishop keeping things in momentarily. As Murphy's got it, everybody cleared. Murph tried to sidestep, going to work his Bishop on that four check there, and Kane's trying to get that, but this time Fletcher Black breaks it up, and it comes up quickly, and oh, Heller with a, an ill-timed pass there. As now it is Kohler, Kohler reversing things. He's going to go the other way and then back the other way yet again. Suburbia and Murphy making their presence known for each other there and behind the net with 5.10 to go here in this second period. That one went off of a skate and offside is the call. 5.10 it is here in the second. Caps are down 1-0 to the visiting Kings. Junior Kings 2017. Spencer Schmidt taking the face off, gets it cleanly back to Solaris. He sends it in from long range and goes right in on the big paddle of Nashols. Caps going to work on the four check, unable to quite get the turnover, but making it difficult on the Kings. They can't get known. Caps didn't get a shot from long range. It looked like Spencer uh, Murphy, I'm sorry. Uh, Hudson Spencer, rather, got that shot down there. That's second one. This one gets up and out of the zone. Schmidt had the rolling puck he had to deal with, and the officials are calling an offside. It's an inadvertent whistle. It should be at center ice, but either way, the officials are saying they mistakenly called the offside. It should be at center ice, but either way, the player's explaining something to the official. might be that the official saw the player grab his helmet and oftentimes they will make a quick stoppage if they think there was a headshot. I don't know exactly what that conversation was. He might have just said that uh, he likes his Bluetooth headphones. Who knows? Spencer Schmidt waiting for the explanation to go over to the Canes bench. <laughs> Canes coaching staff, very, very calm and thankful for the explanation. Face up goes over the sideboards. McGraw overseeing things as it comes all the way back to Hudson Spencer. McGraw doing a great job putting pressure on there. And so there, tried to get up to Shannon Forrest, couldn't get it through the defensive Silvestri though. Hudson Spencer could pass over to McGraw. McGraw digs it up off the boards off the backhand and caps again. Just passing the wrong side of each other. They did a lot of this last week as well. They're uh, making different passes difficult to handle by throwing them into each other's pants and, and shin guards. So just look at those little details. You end up with a lot more control of how you want to run the game when you're executing on those little details. Spencer Schmidt looking things over. Got some help down there in the offensive zone. What a great turnover caused by, who was that? 
Look like Kohler. And here's a shot from oh, Lund Lundbeck smartly stepped away from the shot. That would have gone off the shin guards of the defender who was coming at him. That looked like it was pie. And that would have been a tough foot race coming back this way. So 3.43 to go. You can see a face off to the right of the netminder Nationals. Got back in numbers good. Murphy's got good position here. Pass through. Oh, nifty. Chip. Shot by Staples. He was the early goal scorer. And boy, was he in fantastic position as he skirted through the D and laid his stick out there and got that beautiful deflection up top. But Casalucci fought that one off with a glove, it looked like, with 3 and 15 to go here in the second period. Lundbeck and his mates are back in great position. Lundbeck got dropped, but picked up quickly by Kim, and it's up and through. Fuller unable to handle that one, but he still chipped it away from the uh, defender. He got knocked down for his troubles. This guy standing his ground there was number 47. And from here, 47, Kusis looked like he had a good clean hit, but the official saw it differently. Who's just asking for a little clarification? Interference was the call. I'm not sure, I'm not sure that I agree with that. We're going to take the call. It looked like it was a good timing play by the defender, Kusis, there. But either way, Caps have the opportunity on the power play, but it's only an opportunity to take advantage. And that comes from execution. Passes have to be clean. First start with the face off. Caps have to, uh, passes have to be clean, and then you need to. Execute by getting down in those dirty areas. Caps have not really worked hard towards the front of the net. And you gotta wait. Kim cannot wait for that puck. He's gotta skate to it. And wait for the puck. Things are gonna happen every time. He's moving the puck around nicely on the perimeter, but that doesn't get you too many goals either. One guy out in front, Rosie working. Over to the side here, Rosie's still digging around down below. Another guy down there helping him out. Great traffic. Up and around, Kim keeps it in. Kim pass all the way across. Spencer, Spencer's waiting for traffic, and nobody's getting there. Hudson Spencer, again, right in the pads of the shin guards of Kim. That's a tough pass to handle for anybody. Kim loses track of it. Pass come back up with it. Minute 11 to go here on the power play. Passing it back across. 74, Murray's got it down low. Back to Murray, tripped up on the play. And now the Caps are got a fun. Spencer, Hudson Spencer's got to fend off a two-on-one. He's got to take away that pass, and he didn't. Yeah! He did not take away the pass. It's a textbook offensive play. Skate around the defense. One guy goes to the back post, and the defender, whose job is nothing more than to take away the pass, did not. Pass went right to the tape in the back of the net. So now it's a 2 nothing deficit, two power play goals against. I'm sorry, that was a short-handed play. So one, one power play goal and one shorty. Caps are not executing. You gotta give the Canes all the credit in the world. They had every reason to be frustrated with a lot of the calls they were getting, uh, mounting up. They were fair calls, but they were mounting up and it must have felt a little frustrating and they're just playing the game. They're going through and they're pushing forward. And so now they've extended their lead from one to two nothing. It's not three like it shows on the board there. 140 to go in this second period. We'll sort that out in the initial. Shannon Force going to work over there on the far side. Set things up. He's got Heller at the point. One man in front. I get more traffic the race. And getting back good. Back check there by Soler. Taking away time and space and a little bit of help from what was that on the far side there? It looked like McGraw. And Heller up to Shannon Force. Minute 14 to go through Schmidt. Schmidt unable to skate through that puck, but he comes back up with it again in neutral. It takes a slash. Trying to get over to Force. Force has got some room there. 10 seconds on the power play. Dumps it down in the offensive zone. Minute to go here in the period and five seconds and four. That's the end of this uh, power play. Up oh, tripping over himself was one of the cops players there. There's a one back trip right over the white ice there. And now McGraw digging it up out of the corner, going to work on his own. Everybody going for a change in behind things. 
McGraw had the awareness, played that one off the line from where Murphy was instead of where he was going to be. There's Murphy digging up out of the corner. He's got running room. And nifty long bounce pass up to Bishop. Bishop pulls the trigger, and there's the glove save. Ah, number 32, Nash holds, keeping his slate clean here. It says, it says three zero. It's two, right? Scoreboard. Yeah, scoreboard just got a little bit excited. 23.4 to go. Caps showed small, small flashes of brilliance. They've definitely demonstrated that they are the better club from just watching them play hockey out there, skill wise and everything else. But it takes a whole lot more than being able to stick him on your driveway. Rosie from long range. A little bit of traffic in front. The chip on the far side. And that one just went wide as the buzzer sounded. 2 nothing. is the medium-sized hill that the Caps have to climb here. stuff time after time. Bouncing around in the neutral zone. High going to work and gets it back towards Nash holds on the accidental pass. And he's like, sorry, bro. Oops, I'm sorry. I think that would have been interesting if I had the camera on. Let's see what the Caps have up their sleeves here. This is a good test. A good test of what the Caps have. Oh, that works. Close to the net there. Always trying to dig it up out of the corner. Kessling Germain working on him. Fletcher Black working things out. The poor man's scrum here. And the officials are saying, move it, move it. Maloney dropped down by five. Black over there waving at him. Maloney gets a shot and got lucky. He didn't get called on the weapon as he extended the arm. And he did look for the puck. Not just get a little retribution. Retribution's got to be on the scoreboard as they do now actually have the official 3 0 deficit. Fuller keeps it in, sends it down low, going to work on the forecheck. It's going to be Maloney. Maloney digging in behind the net. Jermaine can't outlast Kohler. Kohler, great body position there. Gets his hands and elbows up a little bit. Those four men come yet again. Now five as the Canes come out with it. And we got a one on 
on some there. Yet again, nifty little behind the back pass there as uh, verbally unable to handle it, and it's in behind the net. Cap's coming up with it momentarily. It's kind of a little bit of a scrum down there as well. Just some, some, some chunky, sloppy play down there by both clubs as they're just slapping around at it. Cap's unable to get the clear all importantly, and there's yet another example of Cap's not getting the clear. This one's around on the near side. Cap's unable to do much with it, being held up as one of the Cap's defenders and got a stick taken away. Play on, say, the officials. And the Caps do get the clear finally. As Kohler has been out there for two minutes and five seconds, finally goes for a change. As they clean setting things up back in their own zone. Wholesale change for the Caps in behind the play. Stevens working, wheeling, dealing. Shane, of course, picks it up in neutral. Looks for a pass back to the far D, gets it. Good lane there as one back skates around a couple of times and a quick pass across. Caps chip it into the zone in the form of McGraw. Gets it up to Shane Ford. I'm sorry, the Spencer. Force looking for the pass to the point, gets it there. Kept in beautifully on the point. Oh, Kim had it on the point. It looked like he kept it in and then it scooted out on him, but then he skated away. But the officials felt that was offside. Even the guy who was right on top of it didn't blow. It was the far official who blew the whistle on that one. But take what you get 14 17 to go here in this critical third period for the Caps. Let's go, Caps! Off the faceoff, puck bounces around a little bit. I don't know if the Caps felt like this was going to be an easier game than it was, or if they uh, felt like it didn't count because it's non-league, but boy, they're not playing with a ton of emotion. Not playing with a lot of oomph there, although Shane Lewis has got a good shot in on Steven, sent him rolling about 15 feet away. And there you go, Kim, digging up out of the corner, gets through the official, fighting things off here. All three forwards here. Oh, and that one goes all the way through. Couldn't quite hit Heller, who was zigging when the puck zagged. 13.34 remaining here in this third period. The clock is not the front of the caps at this juncture. Three sounds like a lot. It's plenty, but there is plenty of time also to catch up if you play your cards right and actually go and execute. Heller digging down in deep. Defender X is uh, activated here. Covering for him is going to be Rosie back on the blue line. He's put right to work there. He's 57. Gips trying to skip through him. Sends one back across. Didn't quite connect with any of his mates. And now quickly the Canes come back and it's a shot up and it's 4-0. So, Caps play with fire and they're getting burnt. They had all those power play opportunities. Did absolutely nothing on it. And they recall they had a two-minute five-on-three. Did absolutely nothing with that. They had a shorthanded goal against. And now they're paying the piper. Let the team hang around. Give the team a couple of chances. And Carolina has, to their credit, taken absolute control of this game. Two goals in this third period. One in the first minute and one in the what, third. Hudson Spencer throws it down low. Once again, a bouncing puck on it to be handled by Murray. Brazella trying to dig it up the point. Gets it really into a nice lane there. And chipped away by the defender, number 23, Chabot. Up, oh, taking a high stick was Murray. Officials aren't going to call that. Shot in long range and looked away and knifed away by Nash Holtz, but not out of the zone. Cops shot down low. Good deflection out front. By 74, Murray shot from in close and went off a something out front. Don't know what that was. Official has his hand up on something. Oh, and the Caps are going to be the beneficiaries of a power play. They, they capped, the Carolina touched it twice. So I'm not sure why the official, the Caps stopped playing because they knew Carolina touched it twice. Boy, that ran a lot of time off the clock there. Slash was the call. Carolina raising their shoulders kind of for the first time in this game, saying, I have no idea what you're talking about, but it's 21 Stevens. That's Patrick Stevens. Not to be confused with um, any other Stevens, none of which are on here. Oh, yeah, Cameron Stevens is brother number eight. 
So very, very important time of here for the Cavs. Kohler wins that incredibly important race off. Over on the far side, Bishop, Bishop looking for some track up front. Black's providing that. Pushed in the blue paint by Kessler. Kohler's out in the periphery. Nobody really in a position to make things tough on this defense here. See Lundback, you want to see him cheat down to the dot down here. She's in the shooting lane. Anybody in the opportunity to do, and then slow to get to oh my lord. This is not the team I watched last weekend at all. They're slow to get to plays. They're not executing. Fletcher Black absolutely mishandling that one. There's a shot shorthanded. Fantastic. come out with a little bit more intensity right now and act, and act like this was an important part of the game because it certainly is. And even if you don't come back and win, you've got to get some quality points out of this one because this is not going to go well on your permanent record as it were. You start looking at national rankings, etc. Oh, trip down on the play, no ball. Rosie working on the sideboards, keep him, but Jermaine's going to get the clear. Does not, goes off the pants of him. Too many white jerseys standing all next to each other. They could have picked each other's pockets there. Kim not able to keep that one in, and so. Tough collision between Hudson Spencer and his counterpart from the Canes there. Looks like he's number two, uh, Cooper Thomas. One of the two Coopers on the team. That shot from in close. Louder misses that one up high. And you would have seen that if I had the camera on it. But Louder doesn't miss the net very often. He's a pretty accurate shooter. They've only got 20 seconds to go here in the power play and 10 minutes after that for the game. So 4 nothing. if you don't score on this power play, you got to assume that's it. And yet another trip is going to be called. And nifty shot by Louder through the legs and the follow-up by Rosello. So Caps are going to have eight seconds of five on three action. Hopefully they're going to win that face off and do something with it. Easy tripping call there. Just 89 to Heath Coburn. Definitely earn your m and Caps. 89 Coburn, yeah. So. One has got on the sideboard. Stevens now chipping out. This should not go out of his zone. It's too early to call And there's a shot. One back goes out to defender number two, Thomas. McGraw working over Thomas. Thomas and McGraw. And there's a shot from one back. One back driving to the net there. That's what you want to see. Where's that been all game? Great job, though, again by Owen Nashals, who has been solid in net. Plays a little deep. The big body Nashals plays deep in his net, but. He's been solid and calm back there for his teammate, and McGraw waiting for that one, and it got away from him as Stevens was able to pull it away, but it went offside against the Carolina players. The, the other Stevens is, is uh, I'm sorry, Jay Staples, rather, is trying to explain to the ref. He felt it went off the Caps player, so it should not be an offside. The officials respectfully disagree, and with 4 nothing lead, the Canes will see the face off just outside of the offensive zone for them. Spencer Schmidt wins that one across. Picked up by Hudson Spencer. And chipped up and out by the defense of the Kings. It's back on their side of things. And up and out. And so one on three. Staples chips it down to the offensive zone. This camp all the way around. Picked up by, looks like McGraw. Gets it up and out. And unable to handle that one's Maloney. Spencer Schmidt going hard for a check. Spencer Schmidt. This game comes all the way 200 feet away, all the way down. He's going to dig in. He's looking good communication with Kim over there. Kim had the initial play on that. Spencer Schmidt plays Stevens out there. Now Caps have an offensive opportunity. Maloney, Maloney to the point. Shot from long range goes out to one defender and two. A couple of deflections, and what a great save by Nashold as the puck was bouncing. He was about six inches off the ice, and he stretched that right leg pad out there. Making just another fabulous save. This one blockered away by Castellucci. Eight and a half to go here in this third period. Cast down four nothing. Another power play going the way of the dinosaur here. 15 seconds and counting on this one. Caps just little spurts of energy here and there. And pull it. 
for looking for a pass in the ring, slow change in behind the play. You know, since Soler took his time getting into the play there, so it took away any opportunities for passing lanes, even in full strength. One back does not feel pressure. Thankfully, got it down in there. Deepest Coburn goes for a quick change for Carolina, and it's under eight minutes now. Nifty little moves there. So Soler stepped around two players, but not the third. This one's a shot from long range, and Nashville takes the knuckling puck. He was going to play it away, but Caps started coming back towards him, and he decided to freeze it down. 7 4 remaining here in the third period. Four for the Kings, zero for the Caps. steps into that one, and it's Soler. I'm sorry, that's uh, Heller. Heller chips it up off the far boards there, and it is Gunnar Lauder trying to get it up to Kohler. He does run into that lane, and it's Lauder and Forrest. Lauder chipped down. Oh, he tried to get the backhand pass out from his knees. He had Shane Forrest driving the net with nobody in tow, and Louder, to his credit, understood the play was happening. Just couldn't quite get the pass off of his knees there. There's a shot from long range, goes off of the knee. Shane, of course, a louder, louder shot goes off of Murphy in front. And with all that beef, once again, Nashville still finds it. 6.51 remaining here in the third. Caps haven't found the solution yet. The rotating lines, they're still not 100% healthy. They had a couple guys on the injured reserve list right now. The least of which is uh, their goaltender, Petty. But two forwards as well. Murray wins a good battle on face off. There, there it is right out in front. And oh, Rosie could not get his stick down. He's tied up beautifully by the defender there. He had a wide open net to shoot at and just couldn't get his stick released from the defender there. Pass all the way across, and it's gonna be Murray, Murray. Blind pass back to the D to Soler. It was the right idea, didn't quite hit the lane there. This one, a uh, bad clearing attempt. And so the Caps are gonna have to go back to working behind their netminder, Casalucci. Yet again, two defenders in below the goal line there with two attacking forwards from the Carolina club. Six minutes and ten, counting down quickly. This was not the Saturday these guys had hoped for. And Bishop and Rosello just a little bit off sync there, trying to come in to the offensive zone, but running offside with 6.01 remaining here in the third. Once again, 8 a.m. tomorrow. So I believe it's an EJ game. We'll check my math, but 8 a.m. is definitely the case. Playing against the Wilmington Nighthawks. Battling for it at the blue line. He will come up with the ball on the first chops, but on the second, he does. Gets it down in the offensive zone, going to work his count. Fine, a little bit speedier up through the middle there. It's outracing several Caps players. Number 19, High has been fantastic in this contest, and he scores absolute Ever goal. Every single Caps player had a crack at that one, and nobody stopped the player from going up the ice. Let's go, All five skaters plus the goaltender, six white jerseys, puck in the back of the net, 5.42 to go. It is five spots to zero. Thomas, the defenseman, playing it back on his blue line. Pitching up to neutral, right on the reception by Geyer there. Geyer working down below the goal line, taken away by Murphy. It gets back around as 74 Brennan Murray taking for a moment, and he's going to run for a ride up that left hand side. And he goes, throws one off the post. Second post for the Caps here, and big physical play by Bishop, and that's his third penalty game, and he's gonna go with a rough there. And his interference is a little bit late on that one. Don't need to be doing that 
after. There's, there's no question on that. When he came in from a mile away, and they called Murray. I thought it was Bishop. He came in from a mile away. They got the wrong guy. So yeah, that, that was the question there. Was they got the wrong guy initially? But Bishop came in from about a mile and a half away at a high rate of speed, and uh, he, he had intentions. So hopefully he'll be able to cool off and come back fresh when he's ready. It's easy to lose track of of those things when, when the game's a little out of hand, 5 nothing. Once again, to the, to the credit of the officials, um, both teams have played generally clean, for as many penalties as they've been, it's been a generally clean physical game. Most of the balls were hooks and chips, and, and where they weren't, they were real obvious one-off kind of things. Guys weren't losing their heads. And there's uh, Casalucci right on track with that big left mitten there. So running the clock with the 5 nothing lead here in the third period, or not. Yes, they are. So Soler tried to get the clear, goes right up to the point, and sent in and then saved. A shot from Cooper Thomas is saved by Ben Castellucci. Interestingly enough, there's two Coopers and two Alexanders on this roster for Carolina, as well as uh, two guys with the last names Stevens. The Caps have an interestingly different situation where they pair of Spencers, but one's a first name and one's a last name, and they have a pair of Jordans, one's a first name and one's a last name. So I was trying to figure out what the guys were doing down there. It looked like a couple of the guys were being very respectful and kind of going, hey, you know what, I get it. The score's kind of bad on your side, but let's keep skating. but we do have the, uh, the game tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. First things first, finish this one out strong. And Solaire turned around on that individual effort there. Bishop's back on, even strength five on five hockey here, hopefully for the remainder. But uh, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning against Wilmington. Hopefully a uh, short memory by these caps on the things that didn't go well and hopefully a, a good memory on the things that they need to work on. And then a little further downrange, next weekend, I believe we have three games. So we'll be up in the New York City area. So keep an eye out for that. McGraw chips one forward with 242 to go here in the third. And it's going to be a one on one situation here. Murphy taking the defensive duties there. And then the quick chip up and out. Caps trying for the forward play. Chabot sends it the other way. Caps back at their own blue line. And Murphy, Murphy can't connect with Heller. Shabbat. Before check by Schmidt, turned over neutral zone. Brendan Murray's got it. Takes it back towards the blue line. Nifty sidestep move there. And side step, rather, uh, step through two defenders. A shot by Kim down and low. Nashville and two for the task with the low glove. the uh, Carolina going to work down there and Caps are finally going to get the clear. Maloney chips it out, goes back behind him though and it's now two on two the other way and up and over the outstretched glove of Casalucci but the Caps are going to get the clear. Gunner louder, backhand pass all the way across trying to catch it out of the air was Maloney is a little too, too high for him but he makes a nifty move. Oh that one right off the face of Nashold's. Nashold's has made a lot of good, comfortable-looking saves out there today, and that one was one that 
It was a zinger came in, went right off his forehead. Oh, right in the junk, Maloney takes one. Rosello gets it back to Louder. Louder with a spin around shot. Goes just wide of the net, under a minute, 49 seconds and counting. This one towards the front of the cage and it's Gunner Louder digging it up and out. Work there, Maloney. Maloney trying to get it to the point, takes the hit for troubles and sure who they're calling on this one 47 go you heard so Koos has got his hands up a little bit on that one the officials discussing whether it's both of them or not Maloney kind of went back at him and once a how about that guy but with the top the clock ticking down 18.9 seconds this is purely academic So it's going to be a four on five on four. So you hear the goaltender really leading well from the blue paint there. Nashville saying nothing to the middle, nothing to the middle. Fletcher sends it towards the net. Bishop's working hard to get down there alone. Caps coming in hard, 13 seconds and counting. Runner louder off to the races here. Tips off the him out. Picking up the point for a moment. Are going to get a little shot on the net? Five seconds to go. And three. Louder might get the shot, might not, and that's it. So, no, uh, pretty late shot there, but you got to give Carolina a lot of credit. They overcame the adversity of a lot of penalties against. I think they were all really good calls. Uh, they could have phoned it in after that. They could have melted down, but they didn't. Cops have a lot to learn from this one. Opportunity here to regroup by tomorrow. Thank you everybody for joining us and we'll see you next time.